Hello everyone, hope you are doing well. I've actually just recorded tomorrow night's video. I've sent it over to Charlie. He's going to make it look good. He's going to do some graphics and bits and pieces. It's a bit of a different video, so tune in tomorrow night, but stick with me for this one, because tonight's video is about the news at West Ham and negotiations with Thomas Suchek and Jared Bowen for new contract deals. Now, I'm going to deal with them separately for obvious reason we're going to start with Jared Bowen the main reason that we're giving him a new contract is to fend off interest from Liverpool in particular I'm when Soufal signed his new contract um in the summer I, I wasn't keen on it it was well, I don't know it was in the summer that came out that West Ham were negotiations with Soufal over a new deal I wasn't very happy about it and the reasons why was because we were negotiating with someone who was in his late 20s after an unbelievable season at West Ham but that's all it was, one unbelievable season. And I just thought, well, it doesn't really warrant a new deal. You're negotiating with a player at his peak. Sufal went into those negotiations, just like Jared Bowen is right now, by the way, where he was coming off the back of consistently good performances over a long period of time. So for the player, he's walking in there with all the power, essentially. He's walking in there arm to argue that he's a key player for West Ham his wage demands can be a little bit higher than usual so on and so forth negotiating power was with Soufal so he signed his new contract in the summer and I'm not gonna lie I wasn't disappointed by it that I understood why West Ham done it I just didn't think it was a good idea that's that's all and having seen his performances this season I stand by it I think it was the wrong thing to do to reward Vladimir Soufal if you like anyway Jared Bowen it's difficult, isn't it? Because he's still got three years to go on his contract. He's here. He's tied down to West Ham until the summer of 2025. So the length of the contract is not an issue. I guess the problem is his wages, isn't it? And this is where signing Kurt Zuma... This is the domino effect of signing Kurt Zuma in the summer. And this is something I was a little bit wary of. I, could, I loved Zuma. I loved to have seen him at West Ham. Still am glad we signed him, by the way. But there was that hesitance in the summer that would be sort of smashing the wage structure I think it was title West Ham would have to smash the wage structure to get Kurt Zuma to West Ham so he's on £125,000 per week we, we knew that the Daily Mail have tried to make on it's a new thing because of the fine that he's received from the club but we knew that back in the summer but the problem is the domino effect of doing that because what you've just done is take the top earner away from Jan Malenko who's on north £100,000 which is an argument for another day and it's been done to death but it then says to any other player at West Ham that this is what we pay our top earners. The key players at West Ham United are entitled to £125,000 per week. Now, obviously, you have to take things into consideration for that age, so on and so forth. But I think when Janet Bowen goes into these negotiations with David Sullivan of Canabadi or whoever it is, he's in quite a powerful position, isn't he? He could go in there, and I think as a West Ham fan, and it is a little bit like of a your damn mentality kind of thing here. But could we really argue if Janet Bowen went in there asking for a similar pay to Kurt Zuma? Could, could we? I think we'd have to give him it, to be honest with you. I still think he's our most important player. I don't think he's our best player. I think that's dead commise. I don't think he's our most valuable player in terms of pound note on the transfer market. That is still dead commise. But I think he's second. I think he's our second most valuable player in terms of pound notes. And... What we're doing, essentially, is fending off interest from Liverpool. But I guess we're securing the transfer value attached to Jared Bowen. You know, 26 years old, it's a really good age to be negotiating with him as well. If you can tie him down with a couple of years added on to his current three-year deal, so you tie him down to West Ham for another five years, it's not a bad contract to be negotiating, isn't it? I think it would be really good news. I think it would be big news for West Ham. And I feel that we're at this Almost like a seesaw point, if you like, at West Ham. It's quite, it feels quite pivotal, this upcoming summer transfer window, because we know there's quite a few players out of contract. Mark Noble, Ryan Fredericks, Andre Yarmolenko. We know there's some players only on loan at West Ham. Alphonse Arriola, Alex Kral. So I would call it a rebuild for the summer. Well... It is a bit of a rebuild, isn't it? In terms of the first 11, I think you've got to be looking at one or two positions as well. But it feels like this summer could or is going to have to be a big one, particularly if we get European football next season. Now, that's up in the air at the minute. It's anyone's guess as to whether we're going to have European football next season. But it's a pivotal one. It's one that's basically going to 
I think we're going to find out the real ambition from the football club here, whether it's the manager or the board or whatever, what they see is West Ham going forward. Are we a stable Premier League club? Because I think at the minute we've got a squad for stability. We've got a squad for top half football in the Premier League. And I think in the summer it's going to be a case of, well, let's see your ambition in terms of your signings. How many players you sign, who you sign as well. How ambitious are you? Let's find out. Let's find out what the aims are for next season. And I think Jared Bowen signing a new contract would be the first step in that. This is not Jared, a big part of our squad. We know that. Big part of our future. We've assumed that as well. But if we can get him to sign a new deal, Jared Bowen. That's Jared Bowen saying, I'm happy at West Ham. I see my future at West Ham. Now, I'm, I'll be the first one to sit here and argue to some extent that the contracts aren't worth the paper they're written on these days because if a player wants to leave, he'll leave eventually one way or another. We're seeing at Leicester City, Yuri Tielsmans, um, I think he's got 18 months to go in his contract, summer 23, won't sign a new deal at Leicester City. They're up against it. Leicester now have to sell him this summer. They just have to. They, um, with one year to go in his contract, they can't allow him to run that down. They're going to have to cash in on Yuri Tielsmans this summer. That's not good. One, Leicester's a way to lose one of their key players. Meanwhile, West Ham are tying down one of their key players to a long-term future at the London Stadium. However, just like Yuri Tielsmans, we're seeing that with Declan Rice, aren't we? We're seeing a player that says, no, I don't want to sign that contract. I don't want to commit myself to the club for whatever reason. And I actually respect it quite a lot, actually. I, I actually respect what Declan Rice is doing because he could easily triple his wages at West Ham and still wish to leave, whether it be the summer or the following summer or whatever. He could still want to leave. Of course, it's a bit more difficult for Declan if he's then just signed a five-year deal. But you know what I'm trying to say? He could easily cash in at West Ham, but he's not. He's not... I won't sign that new contract. I'm not going to take the big money because I see my future elsewhere, perhaps. That's what we're hearing. And in my opinion, I'm believing anyway. I believe that's what's happening. But Jeremy Bowen, it would be a good thing. It would be a good sign, actually, that Bowen at least sees his future at West Ham and he's happy with the way that West Ham are going about things and what the future lies for the club and for him as well. I think if he was to get into the England squad in March, I mean... Bear in mind, these negotiations take a while anyway, so it might not even be tied up in a month's time. It might still be ongoing. If they are, and he does get in that England squad, I like to think that that might help West Ham. That Look, you're in the England team now. Playing at West Ham's got you into that England team. Declan Rice has got into the England team at West Ham and stayed in it. Jesse Lingard got into it at West Ham, went to Man United. All right, he was in it for one squad at Man United at the start of the season, but he's not in it anymore, is he? He won't be in it in March either. So there's enough evidence to show Javid Bowen. Actually, you have an international future as well while you're at West Ham United. There's a contract. Sign it. Write what you write on it. It's like a real Ferdinand thing to Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, isn't it? Um, Bowen's at wheel. Javid Bowen's at the wheel. There you go. Write what you want on it, mate, and sign it. So would be good news. But before we discuss Thomas Suchek, I just want to quickly point in the direction of the One Football app, which is sponsoring this video and continues to support their channel, which we greatly appreciate. The link is in the description, also the pinned comments. We can't, it couldn't be easier to download. Go down to the comment section, there's one by Hammers Chat, it's at the very top, we've kept it at the very top, so it's easy for you to find. There's a link in it, click it. it takes you through to the relevant app store on your device, but it even loads up the one football app for you, you don't even have to search for it. You click that you want to download it, it downloads it to your device. Bish, bash, boss, simple as that. In this video we're discussing money, we're just discussing contracts there's none of that with the one football app it's completely free to download and there's no tie-ins there's no contract whatsoever but when you do download they'll say excuse me who do you support any leagues you like to follow that for myself i'll have a little bit of west ham i'll follow the scotland national team or oh, and the, the Premier league i'm going to keep up with all the big news going on at the other clubs as well once i've done that click on favorites in the bottom right of the app loads up all the emblems click on west ham and there it is all the news I need to keep up to date with the latest going on at West Ham United, including contract negotiations for Jared Bowen and Thomas Suchek. Now we've done Jared, let's talk about Thomas Suchek. Because he's different to Jared Bowen, but he's also different to Vladimir Sufal. The big difference between Sufal and Suchek, their ages. You know, I thought Suchek was, um, sorry, Sufal was in his late, late 20s when he got his new deal at West Ham. Suchek turns 27 in a couple of weeks it's, it's at the end of february very end of february turns 27 it's a good age it's a good age now initially i could understand why people would say why we're negotiating with Sue check let's not negotiate with him because he's not having a great season is he he's not having a great season but this is the flip side of it 
I guess we're going to have to rewind to the summer a little bit for context. So towards the end of last season, as we know, Sue Fowl's team wasn't too happy, wanted a new deal for the client. And I, I remember the, the words being insulted with West Ham's opening offer. But anyway, the reason they wanted a new contract for Vladimir Sue Fowl was that he, Suchek, and a couple of other signings, like Jared Bowen, had transformed West Ham, along with the reappointment of David Moyes, who had gone from fighting down the bottom to qualifying for European football. And they wanted to see that reflected in Sue Fowl's wages. I mean, I got their argument. I just didn't think we should have given him a new deal because of his age. I've dealt with that. Right. Shut it, Gio. Move on, Suchek. So, in the summer, when we signed Kurt Zuma, 125 grand a week, and this is why the Daily Mail article irked me the other day, because they sort of said that that news, his fine being 250, so we knew he was on 125 grand a week, that had irked a few players at West Ham because they felt that they were key players at the club as well as Kurt Zuma, and the pay should be similar. And one of the players they named was Thomas Suchek, but Thomas Suchek was actually unhappy in the summer. As soon as we signed Kurt Zuma, Suchek was unhappy with what he was being paid because, I guess, their reasoning is, hang on a minute, we've got us into European football, we've now, now signed Kurt Zuma, on 125 grand a week. Kurt Zuma was being rewarded for West Ham playing European football, yet the players who got us there perhaps weren't in terms of financially, pound notes, money in the bank, pay slip kind of stuff. And Suchet wanted a new deal. Or I don't know if he wanted a new deal, he's just unhappy with this pay in comparison to Kurt Zuma's. It's hard to argue with him, isn't it? You know, it made sense. But anyway, this is the difference between Thomas Suchet and Janet Bowen. While Jared Bowen walks into that office of David Sullivan, Callum Brady and anyone else that's involved in the negotiations, he can demand pretty much what he wants, can't he, Jared Bowen? He can go in there and say, I'll have that, please. You're going to have to give it to me. Um, I'm pretty important. But Suchek would have had that at the start of the season. At the end of last season, Suchek would have been in that position. Not so much anymore. I would argue, while I've just said Bowen was in the position of power, Sufal was, I would argue going into these negotiations... The power might even be with West Ham United, but it's crucial that we get Suchek signed to a new deal. And I find myself surprised to be saying that myself, but he's a good age. He's 27 in a couple of weeks' time. It's a good age to be signing up, up on a new contract. It's not Sufal's late 20s thing going on. But the reason I think it's important is A, because of his morale. Is is this part of the reason he's not been playing as well this season? Perhaps. I personally wouldn't put down to that. I still stick with the whole... Declan Rice and Thomas Suchek changing roles, if you like. I think the Rice role is impacting Suchek's performances. But that's the exact reason I want to see Suchek get a new deal. Because the expectation, and let's face it, is an expectation. There's an expectation that Declan Rice may leave this summer. And if that happens, we have to keep Thomas Suchek. Not just for continuity, not just so that we're not looking for two first-team centre midfielders, but also it presents Moyes with an opportunity to get the best back out of Suchek. Last season, Suchek, the one that was scoring goals, getting in the box and scoring goals, annoying defenders, that one. The way you can do that, we know how. We just discussed, I discussed it yesterday, and most people in the comments agreed as well. Have a more defensive minded midfielder next to him. So, Deckermise was to go this summer, and instead of finding a like for like replacement, somebody like Deckermise, because there's not many about, there's hardly any of them. That's why he's. he's worth so much money Declan looks like he can do it defensively and he's now showing what he can contribute to the team going forward as well we know that but what it does do it allows Moyes perhaps to go get a different type of midfielder to play next to Suchek to get the best out of Thomas Suchek we wouldn't be looking for a replacement for Declan Rice we're looking for a partner for Thomas Suchek it's two completely different things and I think tying Suchek down to the club a bit more long term and his contract's different to Jared Bones uh, while Jared Bones still got three years to go in his deal Suchek's only got two and I say only because that time gets hoovered up very very quickly like I said you look at the Yuri Tielemans thing at Leicester City he's got 18 months to go won't sign a new contract that time is getting hoovered up fast the same could happen with Suchek in a year's time he'd only have 18 months to go in his contract and be thinking hang on I mean we've got a bit of an issue here we're going to have to sell him or get him a new deal so getting Suchek a new deal now would be a clever bit of business by West Ham. But that, if we could get him and Jared Bowen signed to new long-term contracts at West Ham United, it starts to put things in place because we've got a massive summer coming up. Massive summer in the transfer window. Lots of players to replace. A few players to upgrade as well. Hopefully a couple of players to move on in terms of selling, not just the ones that are out of contract and we're going to let them leave. There's one or two we need to sell as well, get them away from West Ham. 
There's, a, there's an overhaul needed this summer. And that becomes even more important to keep the ones, keep your spine, those that you want at a club, make sure they're staying. Jared Bowe is one of them. Thomas Suchek's another one of them as well. It's important. I think it's important that we get these two signed. Um, and like I said, I can understand why people would argue that we shouldn't be negotiating with Suchek because he's not in the greatest form right now. But that's why you should be negotiating with Suchek. A, morale, show your faith in him. Show him that you know it's a blip. You, we know you're a bloody good player, Thomas. Here's your new deal. We're going to show you. But also B, the club are in a good position to negotiate right now. Suchek can't go in there and demand the same pay as Kurt Zuma. In the summer, he could. Now, not so much. He's not as key as what Kurt Zuma is or as what Jared Bowen is. Jared Bowen can go demand 125 grand a week. So check. I'm not too sure. Makes sense. Good business sense from West Ham to do it now with Sue Check. And for Jared Bowen, secure the transfer fee. If Liverpool do come sniffing, he's probably just turned signing Bowen to a new deal probably turns him from a sixty million pound player into an eighty, ninety million pound player just with that new contract. Anyway. There you have it. That's my opinions anyway. Let me know what you think in the comments below. I'll be back later tonight to have a little look and see what you're all saying. Um, two things. First of all, I did a video last week um, with under-23s manager or the former under-23s manager, Dimitri uh, Hal Haliako. I don't, even, I don't know how you pronounce it. I know you spell it. H-A-L-A-J-K-O. That. Haleako, Haleako, Dimitri Haleako. I didn't want to ask him. When he came on, I didn't want to say, how do you pronounce your surname? I should have done, really. Uh, but I just called him Dimitri, and he was fine with it. So, anyway, we put it up last week, and um, the, the, the interviews with former players and that never do as well. I'm, I've accepted that. I don't agree with it, but I've accepted it. It's just how YouTube works. But now and again, I do an interview, and I think, it's quite good, that one. Wouldn't mind getting a few more views on it. The, the, the under 23s manager one with Dimitri was. It, it tells you a lot about how the, the club works. If sometimes when we do shows like this, they'll say, Why is Moyes not playing the under 23s? But actually, Dimitri answers some of those questions. He gives you a little insight into how the club works and I guess how Moyes works. And he even admits himself that as under 23s manager under Moyes and Pellegrini, he used to get a bit frustrated that some of the youngsters wouldn't get a chance. He would sit there thinking, Hang on a minute, these guys can do the job for what you're looking for but give them a game um, anyway I just thought it was a really good interview if I do say so myself and secondly tomorrow night's video is a little bit different um, trying something different I guess um, hopefully you enjoy that as well Thursday back to normal we'll have the preview for the Newcastle game right I'm going to shut up I'm going to disappear and um, yeah drop a like on the video if you enjoyed it subscribe if you're new and all that I'll see you tomorrow wearing the same t-shirt goodbye